I have a question. Um, if if DCS comes to your house, is it illegal for them to come to your home, remove your children for educational neglect with no warrants, no removal, or any paperwork at all? Cynthia Becker, and this is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and Win. I'm here with attorney Vince Davis and Dean Tong. We're going to take another call, and this time it's Josh from Indiana. Hey, Josh, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. So I know that we had our interview this week, and I know you've got some really good questions for us. So how about we start with the questions? And then we can go into the story if we need more help um, with information. Okay. How's that? Okay. All right. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, if, if DCS comes to your house, is it illegal for them to come to your home, remove your children for educational neglect with no warrants, no removal, or any paperwork at all? Dean, do you want to go ahead and answer that? Well, I'm not an attorney. Obviously, Mr. Davis is the lawyer, but I, my knowledge base there is uh, DCS would have to file a shelter petition. That shelter petition is supposed to be heard within 72 hours in front of a judge to see if there's probable cause to remove the uh, kids. And then that shelter right. petition would have to be followed, followed up by a dependency petition. What state are you in? Um, um, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I'm in Indiana. They they removed my kids on false pretenses. They said my children wasn't going to school, and they were. They was doing online schooling. They the schooling and online wasn't communicating back and forth. So they removed my children from my care, kept them away from me, couldn't talk to them, and then and then against judge's orders, the order was I could see my children two hours a week, twice a week, um, you know, two hours, four hours a week, and. Um, they took my children and wouldn't let me see them for a month against the judge's order well, for education. You know, one of the things you should probably do is to uh, find a civil rights attorney in your area. I can tell you in California, because I'm just licensed in California, in order to remove children here, the social worker has to get a, unless it's an emergency, has to get a uh, what's called a detention warrant, a court order, uh, to allow the social worker in in most cases the police to come out and take your children um right. you know it's a very rare circumstance where you you could lose your children just on the fact that they think they're not going to school because well, that could be easily you. remedied i'm sorry i got them back oh, okay like a week or two two before the fact finding hearing okay. before the fact finding hearing or the day of they can continue it Okay, so you have the kids back. Uh, you might want to see that civil yes. rights attorney. Uh, did you have another question yeah. for us? But yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, well, it's kind of a just something. I've tried to tr to um, locate a civil rights attorney, and I've tried to different attorneys. But just like everybody else, they get that that mindset of if CPS took your children, you must have done something wrong. You had to have done something wrong. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. And that's the flack I get. I was hoping to see if you could help me maybe get me in contact with or if somebody's listening or if anybody knows a, a civil rights. I don't care about – it's not the money in that case. They took my child's first Christmas, his first Thanksgiving from me. They took – you know, they took him on November 17th, so he was gone until we just got him back like three weeks ago. Well, this is what I want you to do. You know, look up civil rights attorneys in your area, and you can do that, you know, on Google, or you can call the the closest, you know, county bar association. Uh, most bar associations have what they call a lawyer referral service, and right. generally you can, get, you can get, you know, some names and go have a consultation at free or no cost or low yes, cost. Sir. And don't yes, forget sir. to go to our website cpsattorneyrolodex.com and input your information and that way we can help you find one as well. Okay. 
All right. I want to thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. You know, give us a call in a few weeks and update us on what's going on with your case. And if you were able to find a civil rights attorney uh, to come back there or who's back there in Indiana to help you, okay? Go on. All right. Um, hey, Dean, I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. And I meant to ask you this when you mentioned it the first time. ABLE test. What is that? Tell our audience all about that. Yeah, that's our gold standard uh, child sex test uh, council, if you will, uh, where we're trying to determine one's pre pre predilections or propensity or penchant to sexually assault the child. So we know from the science, and I'm, I have a peer-reviewed scientific article uh, out as, as well, uh, we know from the science that sexual interest or arousal precedes the act of sexual assault. So the ABLE test is... The website is ablescreening.com, A-B-E-L screening.com. Methodology, legal admissibility, all that stuff is at the website. But the test has been out for 25 years, back to 96. It's gained real good acceptance across the country in jurisdictions uh, that I've appeared in. And uh, so basically we're, we're trying to see uh, the accused's reaction to, say, for example, if you accused of molesting a six-year-old little girl, we're trying to see your uh, your response to a, a prepubescent female versus consensual relations with an adult female. <clears throat> so we would know, uh, you know, whether you have the sexual interest arousal level based on the laptop computer score. Uh, half of this test is off a laptop computer uh, where you're looking at pictures, actual pictures on a laptop computer. The other half is written. Now, the written part is very important, too, because that assesses your cognitive distortion scale. Uh, score and that's important because we know that pedophiles and child molesters will try to justify their actual abuse those that are guilty they're very good con men so if you're trying to hoodwink me as your expert or mr davis as your attorney or your family or the court system or yourself uh you know it, it, it four minutes because we're going to know from the empirical raw test data from the able questionnaire from men which is the written test what your CD scale uh, score is or your cognitive distortion scale score. So if, it, if it's greater than 25%, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Most of my clients score in the 6 to 12% range, very low. <clears throat> and, and in the discovery, where, where that would be important is if uh, the police or DCFS uh, write that the uh, accused told the child, uh, don't tell anybody, keep this a secret. And it's interesting because your, your show is titled The Secret. So, if, you know, if, if the accused told the child, uh, don't tell anybody, keep this a secret, keep this a secret, <clears throat> keep this a secret, because otherwise I'm going to hurt you or your mother, then we would know uh, that's an important variable to look at to be tested for. Uh, with all due respect to attorneys, most lawyers don't even know about this stuff or they, or they just don't go there. Uh, it is very important. Let me t ask you this, Dean. Is the ABLE test scientifically accepted in most states under Kelly Fry or Daubert? It is, counsel, but it's not It's not the test that comes in, per se. It's the expert's opinion to a reasonable degree of psychological scientific certainty. So uh, psychologists like to attain what's called convergent validity. They like to get multiple scores, multiple scales, multiple, multiple indices where the data is corroborating uh, itself. <clears throat> so it's a totality of the findings and opinions from the doctor. Now, certainly the test uh, or the doctor's uh, opinions could come in uh, into controversy, as, as we talked about via, as you know, uh, motion in limine, to try to limit or exclude the doctor's findings or opinions, but that's going to get litigated at a, at a Fry uh, or, or Sargon hearing, Daubert hearing in your state, or, or Daubert hearing in my state of Florida. And the judge is the gatekeeper of the science will determine what is bona fide science, what is junk science, and, and make a decision on that. Very good. Um, I, I'm getting a message. We're going to take a break right now. We're at the top of the hour. But we, when we come back, I have a few more questions for you, Dean, especially for the listeners, um, how you can help them, you know, realistically, you know, what are some of the costs, what are some of the fees, that type of thing. Do you mind discussing those? I can't. you got a minute 20. On that count, so that would have to be, you know, privately discussed. Uh, but for those, you know, for those who cannot, who cannot afford an attorney's fee, you're probably not going to be able to afford an expert's fee. Uh, if you do qualify as indigent or, 
uh, you know, in, in the poverty level than a court. Uh, you, you know, you have a right to to substantive su- substantive and procedural due process. You have a right to experts as you do counsel. One minute. Or juvenile uh, dependency TPR proceeding, the court would clearly consider your right uh, to appoint me um, where my fees are paid for by the people of, the, you know, by the state of California. And like I said, I have a case going on right now from San Bernardino. A criminal case or dependency? Yeah, yeah, that's a criminal case. But I, I've been appointed in many states in dependency cases, okay. um, you know, where the state has also paid my fees. Okay, very good. Especially where t- yeah. All right, we're going to take another break. We're at the top of the hour. Uh, we'll be back with Mr. Tong, with Cynthia Becker. This is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. 